Hi, my name is Grazilia and I attended the 10-day Vipassana retreat from the uh, Markal Center which is in Pune, India. And in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience, but mainly I'm going to share four tips for those of you who will be attending your 10-day Vipassana retreat for the first time. I'm hoping that this helps you prepare for your retreat better and you can make the most out of it. So let's dive in. Point number one, before you go for the retreat, prepare your body to sit on the floor. When you go for Vipassana, we are all allotted a fixed spot and we have to sit at that same spot for all the 10 days. This is always a, a cushion on the floor. Now, unless in your form you have mentioned at the time of application that you have a medical condition because of which you will not be able to sit on the floor and you have requested that you be given a chair to sit, then and only then you will be given a chair to sit. Otherwise, you will be expected to sit on the floor in whichever position is comfortable to you. So you can sit in Vajrasan, that is a thunderbolt or a simple cross leg position or you can sit in half lotus, lotus, padmasan, art padmasan, whichever comfortable position you want to take. Uh, but you have to sit on the floor. Now, a lot of us are not used to sitting on the floor because of which the simple, uh, just the basic thing of having to sit on the floor becomes one of the biggest challenges for people who go for this 10 day retreat. And uh, because of that, since you are then struggling with finding a comfortable position, you are constantly having to change positions and your um, awareness and your focus is naturally then not going to be on your breath not going to be on the subtle sensations in your body, but rather on your pain, on your knees, on your back, on finding a comfortable position, on the clock, because you want to, you know, make sure you want to know how much time is left. And also often, you know, we then go to the teacher requesting and saying that I'm not able to sit and, you know, I want a chair. Um, they do not entertain such requests and they don't allow because um, some some discomfort is going to be there. I'll give you my example. I am a yoga trainer, so I am fairly used to sitting on the floor in cross leg in, in various um, yoga positions. In spite of that, of course, I don't sit for so long, for so many hours during the day on the floor. Uh, so I was finding it challenging myself, but I was still able to manage. Had I not had that experience, like I could see certain others, they were struggling with having to sit on the floor. So my suggestion is that once you have enrolled, once you've got your confirmation or maybe even before that, you can probably start uh, sitting on the floor in whatever position is comfortable to you and maybe even, you know, begin with 10 minutes a day. Now, another tip is that if you are using a prop to help you sit comfortably, that is if you're using a yoga block or if you are using um, a rolled towel that you're placing uh, below your knees or if you're using one of those um, specific meditation cushions or one of those foldable uh, meditation chairs you may want to carry those uh, one, your your prop with you because it will just make it easier for you and once you know the sitting is not an issue then you can um, focus on the learning on the breathing on the subtle sensations in your body Point number two is um, get used to the idea of not having dinner. Rather, I would say um, just work on removing this mental block that because you will not be having dinner, um, this is going to be a challenge for you. For me, um, when I decided that I want to do uh, Vipassana, when I heard, when I first heard about it and I was very intrigued and I said, you know, I thought that this is something I would like to do. And I looked up uh, what the schedule is and I discovered that, you know, there's no dinner served. I uh, was hesitant because I was always used to eating dinners. And in fact, I wanted, uh, you know, I know my metabolism and I know, um, I know that I cannot uh, go to sleep without having dinner. I would feel hungry, I would feel uneasy, I would get irritable, etc. And uh, when I uh, when I signed up for Vipassana, um, a few days before that, I started having light dinners. And uh, I actually started enjoying it. And uh, I realized that, you know, I, I could do this. It's, it's, not, it's not such a big deal. Of course, I was, you know, not... I was going off to sleep sooner. And... Uh, 
this is for those of you who you know would have a block like i did or would have some hesitation or reservations in your mind that how are you going to um survive without dinner so what happens um, in the vipassana schedule is that you are um, served your dinner or your snack i think i sh- i can call it at 5 pm your snack is a cup of tea a fruit and some puffed rice flakes or uh, kurmura kurmura or murmura some people call it uh, that's it uh, which is at 5 o'clock then after that we have our meditation and then around 8 o'clock uh, is when we go to bed and um during the course of the 10 days um i uh, stuck to i stuck to this said that you know i ate what was given i didn't take some people do carry a fruit or something sneak it out uh, uh, from the dining hall i mean when they are when they t- when they are offered during during tea time they sneak it out and then they keep it in their uh, room so that they can eat it later at night uh none of these things are really needed because during vipassana we are not doing uh, much physical activity and um, you know you if you if you eat um, at the fixed time you eat what is given to you you do not overeat because sometimes we do tend to think that you know i will get hungry later so let me eat a little bit more um i think that's a bad idea and uh, you eat what is given to you and then you go off to sleep when you're asked to sleep uh, then you don't feel hungry okay because if you stay awake you will probably start feeling hungry also you're able to wake up easily the next day you're not feeling uneasy and um uh, these guys really know what they are doing you know this uh, this whole um, the course is structured very beautifully and very um, well structured and um you know probably I-, i think that if we were eating our dinners later or we were eating heavier dinners it would not be conducive to our meditation and you know waking up early in the morning and um, so it, it just works out perfectly that you know we eat we have that light snack at 5 pm and uh, we go off to sleep uh, at the time that we are asked to go off to sleep so um, but if you do have you know reservations like that i would suggest that you start having lighter dinners and once you are there do not um, have any uh, second thoughts about how you are going to manage you do not have to sneak in fruits or anything into your uh, you do not have to keep any food you know some people do uh, sneak in some food also some snacks with them just in case they get hungry what are they going to do that doesn't happen if you stick to um, absolutely stick to what you are asked to do um, you know you as per their timetable and um, Uh, if you again if you have any medical condition for which you require to eat you know if you are diabetic or if you are on insulin or whatever health condition because of which you will require dinner uh, please please make a note of it in your form and um, request and uh, then you will be served dinner but yes if you go there and you get hungry and you say that you know unless you are having a hypoglycemic episode then it's different but otherwise you say that you know i'm hungry and i want to eat uh you will not be offered uh, food out of uh, the schedule um i have to tell you that during uh, all along all during my 10 uh, almost it's a 12 days 12 day period there i didn't really ever experience the feeling of hunger because um i wasn't doing anything physical i was eating when i was offered food and besides that we are just sitting and meditating we are not really doing and you know we take some light walks um during the free time but apart from that uh, you know food is not uh, such a big issue i know before going for uh, the vipassana course in my mind uh, i was a little concerned so i thought let me put it out there for those of you who are also concerned about this also when i came back people asked me that you know how is it with the food how do you manage but uh, really it's it's not an not an issue food is unlimited meal times you can eat as much as you want to um sometimes you're tempted to uh, eat a little bit more and then uh, you will regret it later <laughs> so uh, food is unlimited food is uh, simple uh, satvic food as is required as uh, uh, you know a simple vegetarian food and uh, it's it's not a problem at all point number 3 is um once you're at the vipassana center and you are entering uh, for your course um leave all your baggage behind in terms of whatever else you have learned whatever else in terms of spirituality other meditation techniques you may have learned uh leave behind the the need or the desire to 
um, do what you feel you want to do. Just go there with a blank slate, as a blank slate, and um, ready to absorb everything without any prejudice as, you know, an absolute novice student. Um, Vipassana is not very easy, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Um, it also, I think, depends on your state of mind when you go for the course. So when you're sitting there in silence, you're, you're it's, it's a silent retreat and you're silent and not having any physical, any emotional, any mental contact with anybody. You are not even allowed to make eye contact because even that is communication, right? So you don't have any books to read. You don't have, um, you're not allowed to do any um, physical activity like exercise or yoga or pranayam, any of those things which you would normally do. You're not allowed to say your prayers or, you know, do the mala or do the rosary or any of those things. You're, you're asked to suspend all those activities during that time. And uh, I think sometimes we are tempted to... Um, do what we feel like doing you know we think that oh this is just a tiny little thing this is okay it doesn't matter or you know i'm not able to do um the meditation the way it's being taught but i can do it this way this is the way that i can usually do it and it works for me so let me do it let me try this way uh, my suggestion would be to not do that and to stick with what you are being asked to do because um, this is a very ancient technique being taught from years in several countries and um, pers my personal experience was that it's a very beautifully structured um, way of introducing you to uh, a meditation technique and uh, teaching you step by step you know every day you're learning a little bit more and every day uh, uh, there's a new facet that's added to the meditation so you're gradually taken taken along the way you know and uh, if you do have any queries rather than uh, allowing your own experiences to come in and rather than using your own um, uh, imagination or your own thoughts and doing what you feel like doing i would suggest that you speak to your teacher uh, we have time every day where we can go and speak to our teacher and get our uh, doubts cleared uh, you can take your questions to the teacher, but uh, it uh, uh, refrain and uh, you know resist this the, the temptation uh, of doing what you think you want to do, um, or rather making any deviations from the schedule or from the teaching technique or from uh, even the rules. You know, uh, for instance, if you're asked to not take your mobile phone inside. There were some people who had sneaked in their mobile phones and who thought uh, who thought that, you know, um, I need an alarm clock to wake me up, so I need it. Or I will be having uh, uh, an emergency call coming in, so I need to carry my phone inside or whatever. You know, they had their own uh, reasons, reasonings. Uh, because on the last day when we all received our, uh, when we all broke, came out of the silence, we were sharing and talking. And that's when I heard uh, some people mention that, yes, because sometimes the phone rings and, you know, uh, we could hear that some people have kept their phones. And by the way, if you are caught flouting any of the rules, then you are respectfully asked to leave because uh, it's really a waste of your time and their time. And I think uh, for... Uh, you know, for someone like me, for instance, when I signed up for Vipassana, I had to cancel it twice before I was for, you know, for work reasons, for personal reasons. And finally, the third time I was able to make it. Um, so twice I was I had to cancel it. And then finally, I was able to go. So you're actually all of us, we're making we're taking 10, almost 12 days out of our life um, where we are leaving our work. We're leaving our families. We're leaving our children behind. We're leaving our mobile phones behind. And um, we are going, uh, we're getting this opportunity to just dive deep in and, uh, you know, learn this um, meditation technique and spend time with ourselves, spend time with, um, without any, um, any um, distractions where there are so many volunteers um, and so many teachers just there for our sake. And I think uh, you must just make the most out of it, you know. 
um, so just go with what you are told um, there is a reason why you're asked to not take your mobile phones there is a reason why you're asked to be silent so even even uh, you know the, the the rule of being silent some people do talk and it's it's human tendency that we look to make that connection we being silent is not easy uh, even uh, i you know my example i'll tell you i i was tempted to make eye contact with someone i mean it's so many days where the only person that you have spoken to is your teacher and uh, um sometimes you don't have anything to say but you just want you know your you get so overwhelmed with your own thoughts that you want an escape sometimes and you are tempted to talk and you are tempted to make eye contact or you may be tempted to keep some reading material with you uh, i uh, would recommend that you don't do any any of those things and just go with what you are being told to do it's just a matter of 10 days you have you know done all that effort taken out time from your schedule so just go with what you are being told to do so this is something that i will suggest because i noticed that a lot of people uh, were flouting rules and they probably didn't realize uh, that you know it's it's uh, what they are doing so and and when the meditation techniques were being taught i was personally kind of tempted sometimes that you know i'm i'm not this this meditation this time i'm not able to there are too many thoughts i'm not able to stay on the breath why don't i just try counting and and rightly so you know at that point you would have um, the teacher tell you or in the evening satsang goinka ji would mention that you know if you are having thoughts like this please do not do it and uh, it, it was very uh, uncanny that uh, every evening in the satsang usually the queries that i had during the day or the thoughts that we had during the day were answered during the evening satsang which was really um, really nice Point number four is about um, things like what you have to pack, what you have to carry with you. Uh, some basic tips about that. So first, coming to clothes, um, carry clothes which are um, easy to wear, comfortable, and uh, modest. You're not allowed to wear anything that is sleeveless or that is um, short. You know, so and you will be sitting uh, most of the time. So um, carry stuff that is um, easy to wear and that's uh, comfortable. also if it's very if you're going during the winter season then do carry um a shawl or a jacket or something because even if you're not one of those people who feels very cold you will be having to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go for the meditation so it does get cold especially during winter season so do plan and carry according to the season check with the center whether they have a laundry service or not so the markal center in pune has a laundry service very nominal charge and uh, they um, you know wash the clothes and uh, iron them and give them to you um, i was not aware of that so i had carried a lot of clothes and it was a big suitcase which was absolutely unnecessary so um, you can uh, you know accordingly if if you are used to washing your clothes then great you know there's no issue at all but otherwise you may want to check with your center if they have a laundry service and you don't need to carry 10 pairs of clothes for the 10 11 days and you know that becomes a bit too much um you can travel you can pack light um you will not be having your mobile phone with you so you may be a little concerned that you know how are you going to wake up you will need an alarm clock um i was also concerned and because of that i had also forgotten to carry my watch so because of that once i deposited my uh, phone i uh, you know you get some basic things basic uh, stuff is available inside for purchase in inside the center and these are very very nominally priced so i had purchased a small clock from there but um, because i thought i need i would need to see the time and i would need help waking up but uh, this was absolutely unnecessary because the volunteers there uh, every time uh, the volunteers there they do come to um, you know wake you up if you haven't come to the meditation hall or if it's time for meditation or time for lunch the lunch or snacks or tea whatever they do come and knock on your door and uh, even if you have missed the bell there's always a bell uh, that goes on uh, you know when it's time for any of these activities and you're asked to be present you're required to be present in the meditation room or in the dining hall uh the bell goes off but in case you do um you know don't show up on time or uh, the the volunteers are very watchful and they are very uh, they diligently come and they check uh, uh, is if everything's okay if you need any help why have you not come to the meditation hall you know are you running late and basically they make sure that they 
uh, get you to <laughs> the meditation room. So you don't have to be concerned that uh, you know you may oversleep or you will miss the meditation uh, or you will miss the meal times. Uh, in spite of that, if you think that you know you want uh, to have a to know the time and you want you need to be uh, you need to have an alarm clock with you, you can probably consider carrying a small clock along. I also suggest that you carry a torch because uh, I had I had uh, purchased a torch from the center because um, you know most of these uh, vipassana centers are in the outskirts and uh, um, when we wake up in the morning and we're going to um, from our room we are going to the meditation hall or we're going to the dining hall it's dark sometimes there's no light and you know you you need um, some light so uh, you may require a torch so do pack a torch along with that uh, if you're going to the Merkal Center specifically, uh, it's a simple thing, but do pack a water bottle, carry a water bottle with you because the water arrangement is such that uh, water is available, drinking water is available uh, near the dining room. The dining room is a bit of a walk from our rooms. And if you don't have a water bottle, some people had uh, forgotten to carry a water bottle and then um, every time they wanted water, they had to go to the dining room. Uh, it's a small thing, but I thought it's worth mentioning. Uh, also footwear, um, Probably you want to carry slippers or slip-ons or something that's easy to wear and not uh, lace shoes which require you to um, lace them up every time because several times during the day you are, uh, every time you enter the room, whichever room you're entering, you know, you will be, you remove your shoes and uh, you remove your footwear. So if you are having some, some people there had got the lace shoes and they were finding it a bit of a, you know, struggle every time to have to lace it up. So do carry some slippers or slip-ons or something that's easy to wear. And um, besides that, of course, carry your basic stuff like, you know, wherever you will go, you need your toiletries and uh, stuff. Um, they do provide a bed sheet and uh, a blanket and a pillow. But if you think you prefer to carry your own stuff, uh, you could do that. Um, and um, uh, to sleep, you have, uh, it's a tiled uh, kind of a, a bed bed kind of thing it's not really a bed but it's a tiled surface with a thin mattress and uh, you're given a, a bed sheet and a pillow and um, you know you get used to sleeping it's um, it's something new but you get used to it you get used to sleeping on that and um, yeah I guess that's about it that's about covers up everything and if you have any questions um, leave it in the comments and I will reply to you I wish you all the best I hope you make the most out of your uh, Vipassana 10 day retreat and um, good luck.